journey where we keep learning all throughout. So what points did you like the most? Points for this conference. For this conference or this session or any other session throughout the past two days? Nine out of ten. Wow, can we give him a big hand everybody? Nine out of ten. I hope next time we'll make it ten out of ten, right? How about you? The same. The ten of ten. <laughs> <laughs> so what uh, part of the session or what part of the conference did you like the most? All the parts. All the parts? All the parts, parts yes. Favorite mm, I say favorite or non-favorite is nothing like in the conferences. You're uh, comparing the show is one of the, his favorites. Yes, I like that on the mic. Professional. She is very professional and you must share your secret of uh, being so jovial and so uh, you know, smiling all the time. <laughs> it's the compliments that keep me going. All right, thank you so much. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we are all set to go ahead with our next session today. And uh, as I still see people walking in, I request you to please sit in the front rows for those who are still. So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give ourselves a huge round of applause for being here. I'm sure you deserve better. Give yourselves a huge round of applause. Fabulous. Well, it's rightly said that live as if you die tomorrow and learn as if you were to live forever. So let's go ahead with some more learning, with some more interesting topics with another personality who's joining us on stage with something all the more interesting to bring to you. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a huge round of applause to Mr. Sharath Malhotra, who has a lot of designations straight from Senior Vice President Group Automotive Refinishes Nipsey Group, President Automotive Refinishes Nippon Paint India, President Wood Coatings Nippon Paint India, Director NP Automotive Refinishes Thailand and Indonesia, Director Nippon Paint Middle East. I request uh, Mr. Kalpesh Dhami to please escort him on stage. Do we have Mr. Kalpesh Dhami with us? Okay, I request Mr. Rohan Bhasin to kindly present a bouquet to Mr. Sharad Malhotra. Can we give him a big hand, ladies and gentlemen? Come on, let's give a warm welcome. everybody I am always in a dilemma I have always been given a very difficult task you know of introducing somebody who frankly who needs no introduction so the day one I had the same dilemma I mean today I have the same dilemma I have two pages of Mr. Malhotra wherein an entire details is mentioned you know I would not like to elaborate on that you know because I would uh, try to pick up a point from Mr. Khera's session you know not B2B or B2C, but P2P. So I know him P2P, so I would like to you know, present it in my way, uh, how I know him. He, he is a very special guest of uh, IPCA and an apt example in real life of the four pillars I mentioned in my opening address, inspire, passion, connect, and achieve. He is an inspirational leader, a passionate team worker who connects with each and every member of his team and achieves his vision. Friends, oh, I like the work folks. Folks, there are very few who would like to go outside the comfort zone, be it the comfort of working within the paraphernalia of the existing system or selling an established brand. But he has not ventured, but if I may put it, adventured 
into starting from scratch and taking the Nippon brand to the heights it has achieved today. He may be a soft-spoken person, but he is very aggressive and innovative in his marketing strategies. A person who took the market by storm shunned the idea of the phrase survival of the fittest and converting that to survival of the disruptor. Awards have no meaning for him, but frankly, awards get a meaning when given to him. We are grateful for his gracious acceptance of our invitation that he is amongst us today in spite of returning back from Hong Kong in the wee, wee hours post midnight yesterday. Thanks, sir, for the effort for being with us. An excellent orator, visionary, and self-made achiever who not only dreamt but went on to achieve his dreams. Please welcome with a large round of applause the president of <laughs> Nippon Paints, Mr. Sharad Marutra. Thank you so much. That was like, wow, Rohan, thank you so much. Nobody has ever spoken about me like this, so I'm very grateful. Well, thank you. And thank you, everyone. And good afternoon. It's always a tough uh, thing to speak after somebody like uh, Mr. Shiv Khera. And I was cursing Rohan for doing that to me. But uh, well, uh, somebody has to do it, so let me be the one. Um, it's my great pleasure to be here to join all of you for the IPCA's biennial conference. It's very rare for me, actually, to get an opportunity to speak to uh, an audience like you, uh, such an august gathering of people. It's a real pleasure and it's a real honor. Please forgive me, I'm not feeling so well, so um, I couldn't really, uh, unfortunately, this whole week I was traveling. Uh, it was a very busy schedule. We have, uh, like this, you have a conference for three, four days. We had a conference like this for three, four days in, in Hong Kong. We have just uh, came back last night about two o'clock. <laughs> So in case I don't measure up to your expectations, I can speak better than this. But uh, let me give it a shot. So I come from a, a, a small paint company called Nippon Paint. Why I say small? Because we are very small in India. We're not very well known in India. But Nippon Paint actually uh, globally is the fourth largest paint company in the world. And uh, the number one coatings company in Asia. Uh, the many businesses of Nippon Paint which are still not aggregated under the Nippon Paint uh, legal entities. So if you see the coating world, uh, they would say we are number five in the world, but actually we are number four if you add up all those businesses which are slowly getting uh, where Nippon Paint is now acquiring a majority share. So very large company, but like in cricket, today also India is doing a good job against Sri, uh, Sri Lanka. But like, uh, like cricket, you know, when a batsman or a batswoman, this kid is like learning. Like Virat Kohli or a no wonder. Raj, Five. You know, the Indian Ooh. women's cricket team is now very popular. They go out to bat. Just you have to start from zero. Off. True. A so I may have months. Nippon Paint may have scored centuries after centuries. Would I live the same way? I but when we started the business in India, we started. If you have books, sir, I was. Appointed by Nippon Paint to set up the automotive refinish business. And I had to start the business from a barista coffee shop. So actually speaking, I feel like, you know, some of the people in this room, people who have started business on their own, with their own hands, you know, those are the people who will identify with, with this because even though it was not my own money, but I felt like it was my own business. And uh, I'm really, you know, I really feel that people uh, who have who are self-made, who have done everything by themselves, people like you, uh, really the ones uh, who should be respected much more than people like me who are you know, just here because we are good uh, managers in some way. So all the, all the credit to you. So I set up the office from Barista and there I was boldly setting up the vision for a company and we decided that the vision is going to be around innovation, excellence and delight. So the, the tagline we set was Innovate, Excel, Delight. A little company in India, but with a big heart. So that was what we were all about. The uniqueness about Nippon Paint or the Nipsey Group, you know, the Nipsey Group is what we are called outside uh, Japan, is that we allow a thousand flowers to bloom. We are not a company where the top management decides everything and everybody else follows. 
So we are a company where we allow a thousand flowers to bloom and we encourage what we call the warlord mentality. What is the warlord mentality? This is a mindset that encourages our employees to think like they are owners, not like nine to five employees. This mindset is what creates a purposeful culture in which we motivate our employees or owners to push boundaries, think and act differently, be very relentless with experimentation, and not worry about ROI, not worry about this month's financial results or this quarter's financial results as most multinationals are always doing. And I'm really proud of this team that started this journey with me. And today, I believe we are a company of owners. Armed with this mindset, we actually developed our strategy to take on our competitors because we had, when we came to India in the auto refinish business, of course, they were big uh, competitors. It was very classic David versus Goliath. I don't know if everybody knows this story, but a very unequal battle where we were a small player. We did not have much knowledge, much experience in auto refinish, and we were up against the big giants. This was a battle in which we had to choose between being another me too paint supplier or try something different. So in marketing, and I've, I've done marketing many, many years ago, we were taught that there are only two ways that you can compete. One is to be a cost leader. The other is to be a differentiator. We chose to be the differentiators. So everything we did, from the day we started our little company in India, Till today, um, when I broadly supervise uh, a host of countries uh, in the group, has been to create that differentiation, bring that spikiness, you know, spikiness, the jo ek, ek sharp point hota hai aapka, uh, strategy ka, to bring that spikiness to our business model, our USPs, and our approach to the market. I was really somebody who was brought up to believe that I could change the world. Well, at least let me try and change the dynamics of my industry, my domain. Without really talking much about it, I'd like to share a few examples, only a few examples to show how we move beyond differentiation uh, to something that was more of a disruption. Because as Rohan mentioned, you know, one thing I really believe is today, it's not just about survival of the fittest, it's about survival of the disruptor. Because if you don't disrupt your business models, and today's world is very tough, you have to keep on innovating, you have to keep on disrupting. Okay. So the first thing we did was we changed the way we approached our business. As a typical paint company that did not really have the cheapest products, we were sure to find most doors close to us, and that's what happened. Our competition made sure that nobody was willing to give us any, any room. So what we did was we entered the market by introducing our non-paint products. So we were a paint company, but we entered the market with products which were not paint. We entered the market with things like rubbing compounds, polishes, because those products helped us to enter the channel and also helped us to gain traction with the OEMs, the automotive OEMs that were and even today are reluctant to open their doors to new paint suppliers. What we actually created, in fact, we were the only paint company and even till now we are the only really successful paint company. We were the first ones to bring the non-paint products and even today I believe we are the, many people copied us after that, but even today I think we are the only really successful ones who have made the non-paint into a big success story. So what we actually created was a platform. You know, today people talk about marketplaces. People talk about how the snap deal business is failing because it's only a marketplace. So a lot of innovations on the, on the e-commerce side about marketplace, but we actually created a marketplace for other suppliers to sell into the Indian market using our brand, using our window. Again, a very different concept. Nobody had done it before. So this was a big paradigm shift. And also uh, this non-paint created a, a disruption in the market 
we launched a brand called Nax Pro. And this was a brand for our non-paint series. And under this brand, we started offering masking systems, sanding systems, polishing systems, and protection systems. So these were completely innovations, completely new to the market, very different concept. And this approach helped us to also create a new route to the market because it was not just that the channel opened their doors to our non-paint products, but today one of my biggest customers in the aftermarket is Maruti Suzuki. And I don't supply a single liter of paint to them. They buy more than one crore rupees of non-paint products from me every month. Can you imagine? So, Maruti Suzuki buys our paint finishing products and they sell it under the Maruti Genuine Accessories banner. Here we supply the products directly to Maruti and they distribute it to their car dealers and workshops and we provide the technical and demand generation support. This is a completely brand new way of marketing products in our, in our country. Further, now we are going to be the first paint company which has got an approval to sell car care products. Again, nothing to do with paint. Car care products to Maruti Suzuki's, uh, through Maruti Suzuki, as in we will supply to Maruti and Maruti will supply to their dealers, car care products. And this will be directly marketed to the car owners. Now, if we were a typical paint company or if we thought of ourselves like a typical paint company, I don't think these opportunities we would have even dreamt about. So today, for the first time, a so-called refinish paint company will be marketing products directly to car owners through Maruti's thousand plus dealers and workshops. Imagine the opportunity to engage with about 15 lakh car owners every month. So what is this? Is this B2B or B2C? I don't know. No, honestly, you know, uh, we if we go with very fixed mindsets, like thankfully many of our competitors do, uh, you can't see these opportunities. And today also I think the opportunity in front of us, even we cannot grasp. Because from a company which is a, a refinished paint supplier, how do we actually now reach out to 15 lakh car owners on a monthly basis through 1,000 points in India? It's completely consumer marketing. We are not geared up, but I'm just saying these are the kind of opportunities that can be created. If you keep the customer in focus, if you try to keep the customer central to your plans and stop thinking of you're a B2B or a B2C company. Now, I don't know what Shiv Khera spoke about this, but I presume that today the time has come that we have to completely run away from those typical preconceived notions about how business will happen in India. So this was something very remarkable. I'm, I'm just sharing this example with you because I'm really proud of what my team delivered and what we did. I'll share with you another example. <coughs> Nippon paint is very good in architectural paints, but not very good in something called wood coatings. So we used our knowledge base of paints, particularly PU paints. Our, you know, our very respected suppliers are sitting here who supply the acrylic polyols to us uh, like Ideal. Uh, Chemplast. Uh, so we use their products, we use their technologies to actually create products based on our refinished knowledge for the wood coating market. Our color capability, our technical strength was, was instrumental in creating this opportunity and we call this opportunity the wood art business. We believe that this was an opportunity that any refinished player could have taken up, but they did not. Because everybody typically thinks that wood coating means decorative. But the product is pretty much refinished, you know, actually. So, and today the market is changing, boss. Today uh, you need to give technical support. Today you need to have color. Nobody used to sell color on wood, but we've launched colors on wood. I'm gonna show you a film now uh, on on wood coating business, if you if you can just uh, pay some attention to it. 
So from auto refinish, we went to wood coatings and we introduced wood art by Nippon Paint. Today, wood art by Nippon Paint is a reality, a passion and a commitment to provide the most outstanding finishes on wood, utilizing the knowledge base of uh, both Nippon Paint and our partners, IVM Chemicals from Italy. We haven't just introduced uh, the largest and probably the best portfolio of products in the wood coating industry. But I think we have brought about a change in the way consumers will want their wood and other surfaces to be coated. Whether it's through the use of special effects and the film you would have seen special effects or our auto refinish colors that we have now launched in the wood series or the, you know, the tinting systems, the polyester coatings, the anti-scratch coatings. So it's, it's a completely different world that we have launched, that we have introduced to India. Wood art by Nippon Paint is here to disrupt the market, not to, not to play by the rules of the market. And that's what we are all about. And this will be achieved not only through the products, but also our digital innovation. So in today's world, digital is becoming very, very important. I'm not an expert on digital, but in this particular field, we have gone digital where our apps are designed for painting contractors to not only register their sites, but also make quotations to their customers, develop their own photo libraries, and also a medium through which they earn and get their financial rewards from us. So it's a fully integrated digital infrastructure that we have created for our customers, which are, in this particular case, the contractors. So WoodArt was a big innovation for us, a big step for us. For a company that was proud of its heritage in architectural and automotive OEM coatings, 
we did not have much to show in case of auto refinish and wood but today we are poised to become world leaders in these new fields i now head the automotive refinish business i had joined the company in 2010 to start the business in india and now i head the automotive refinish business for nippon paint uh, worldwide and while we have a very small world we are only present in 20 countries but these 20 countries we have started in the last 3 years and most of these countries are in asia and middle east but what is very interesting is now we are entering europe now we are entering australia all based on what we have created in india not based on whatever was there in japan or elsewhere so it's all based on the strength and foundation of the same tireless fearless adventurous india core team that started the journey uh, with nippon paint in india in 2010 2011 2012 everything we do is based on the power of our people for us the world is really a smaller place without borders and the epicenter of our world is india and that's our new theme as well duniya ka rang badalna hai and that's what really we believe we have to do as a part of our innovation strategy where we keep on changing the way we do th things in this world uh, we've just launched our products in australia and i'm just going to request if they can sh uh, you know show you the av the australia launch uh, audio visual tend to become the most preferred body shop brand through our innovations, excellence in execution, customer friendly approach and total solutions. Our products have always been excellent to use and service, to build on the core value and efficiency and quality. We have produced some of the best refinish products for the profession like the velocity system and cyclas. Nippon Paint is in the business of restoring or creating the OEM finishes on all automotive vehicles. We train repair teams to deliver optimum finish using high productive systems like Velocity Repair and the Single Visit Steps VOC compliance system. We have standardized training modules to ensure complete understanding of our paint and non-paint solutions across the NIPSI group. Tailor-made training for major repair centers on color and processes along with e-learning to deliver what you need at your doorstep. We will continue to work closely with our channel partners through our wide product assortment, customer service and consistent friendly policies to help grow the business. Our customers in Australia will enjoy working with our products due to their high profitability, easy application, tremendous efficiency and advanced accurate and quick color matching join us on a fulfilling journey towards growth and success thank you 
We have formed our international business team, the Group Automotive Refinish, to create a global footprint for leadership in the AR market. Investments in colour, training and infrastructure will deliver a strong AR ecosystem. Well, this was Australia. So what now? What next? <clears throat> There's a saying. This is not working. Okay, I'll use this. It's fine. There's a saying that the moment we stop to smell the roses, we get hit by a truck. So you can never stop on this journey to stop, you know, you can't stop innovating, you can't rest and think, okay, I've done it all. So we continue on our path of disruption, continue to innovate and re-innovate and renovate. We also believe in self-disruption. We are not prisoners of structure. We believe that if we don't keep on changing and cannibalizing ourselves, our competitors will. For us, now the big question is, how do we make our company stay true to its mission, to continue to evolve, and yet stay committed to our core philosophy and vision? As we grow, how do we overcome the predictable you know, growth crisis that will come? How do we continuously innovate without letting complacency or bureaucracy come in our way? Do we have any magic formula to make change stick? Unfortunately, we don't. So the path that we have chosen for ourselves is quite difficult, but it's very deeply satisfying. Relentless with our pursuit for excellence and consistent with our approach to raise the bar in terms of coatings. From in-house developed color spectrophotometers to be deployed in body shops to the world's fastest painting systems to mono coats, it's never enough to be good for only the present. We have to constantly look out for new technologies, new concepts, new themes, and well, not we can't really say no to any possibility. We can't say, okay, this is not what I do, or this is not, you know, I don't want to do this. So today we are innovating to make our coatings easier to apply, faster to cure, compliant to European emission norms, more durable. But that's only part of the story. All over the world, traditional business models are being disrupted. And that's what is a lesson for all of us because today disruption is here to stay and no industry is safe from disruption. New innovations are gaining ground. What is really required? And everybody, whether it's a small industry, big industry, has to think about what are the earth shattering innovations in terms of technology, route to market, business model itself that we can do that will change the way the business is being done all together. So, you have come conference, you have come to many good sessions, partly come. But I'm sure one of the things you should be aspiring to take from this conference is, what have you learned? What is something new that you've understood? So please think about that, because everybody has a beautiful mind. Everybody can really experiment and see where what you take out of this conference and what is it that you will do to change the way you're doing business today. So today is actually the industry's Kodak moment and Rohan was telling me that people have used Kodak uh, quite a lot in the conference. I'm sorry, I did not know. But it's really the Kodak moment for the industry. We can see what is coming our way, but are we really geared up to change tracks? If we are too secure in our past and our present, we may be losers in the future. And that very classic example is Kodak, yeah? It's, a, it's in fact, you know, one of the companies which had digital camera technology. They were amongst the first people to have digital camera technology and they never employed it. They never deployed it in the market because they felt ki wo dal diya to hamari film business ka kya hoga. Similarly, Nokia, very similar example. Amongst the first companies to start the, the smartphone revolution, but never really got away from the, their traditional strength. Nokia at one point of time owned the market. 75% of the margin 
of the entire world market was with Nokia. I'm not talking about market share, I'm talking about margin share. I'm talking about margin share. And still they never stepped away from what they were doing. And they allowed Samsung, they allowed Apple to come in and kill them. So this is what this world is all about. You can get blown away by the disruption if you're not disrupting yourself. You have to innovate fast and change the game. And similarly for us in the refinish industry, the choice is very simple. If we believe we are in the market for producing and selling auto refinish products, then we would have never gone to wood, we would have never gone to non-paint, we would have never gone to Australia. If we believe that we are only an auto refinish player, we would sign our own death warrant. And that's not a joke, huh? It's, it's serious. Today, what is the future of the refinish industry? It's not so good. Let me tell you honestly. Europe, US, the industry is not growing. Asia, if you look at the market today, driving habits are getting better. Drunk driving is reducing. It's true. It's very true. Delhi, jaise shahar mein, 24 percent accident rates come ho gaye. It's shocking, right? It's happening in India. It's happening in Shanghai. It's happening in Seoul. It's happening in Tokyo. It's happening in Bangkok. Everywhere, because I handle these markets. It's horrifying. So what will we do? So today, compliance is better. Infrastructure is better. Accidents will definitely come down. How do we ensure that our profits don't come down? And that's the power of innovation and that's the power of, of disruption. In the future, driverless cars will reduce the probability of accidents even more. Theek hai, hamare minister saab ne bola hai ki Hindustan mein abhi nahi leke aayenge driverless cars. But who can stop technology? Technology will keep on innovating, right? So eventually driverless cars will come to India. And when driverless cars come to India, what will happen to the refinish industry? It will die, more or less. So what should we do? So while we extend the boundaries of our business to enter new segments like wood or new markets like Australia, we also have to reinvent ourselves. From a refinished paint supplier, we aspire to becoming a finishing expert. We no longer want to be a refinished paint supplier. We want to be a finishing expert. We want to be involved with, uh, you know, washing cars. I'm serious. In India, there's a revolution coming up which is called dry wash. Pani khatam ho hai Hindustan mein. Dry washing is becoming, going to become the future. Mark my words. Next conference, I'm, I'll come and I'll talk about dry washing because we are investing in dry washing now. If you guys call me again. So we want to get involved in washing. We want to get involved in cleaning. We want to get involved in painting. We are already involved in painting. We want to get involved in protection. We want to get involved in maintenance. And not just for cars, but for any kind of surfaces. Because the ecosystem cannot be limited to only cars today. So we aspire to be much more than just a refinished paint company. From product selling, we wish to effortlessly migrate to becoming a totally integrated solution provider. Sablog bolte hain, yes, I'm a solution provider, I'm a one-stop shop, but it's bullshit. To become that takes a lot of effort. We are not there right now. And probably it'll take us a lot of effort to reach that position that we aspire for. We want to offer all kinds of services to the consumer, offering her a basket of products and services. Not necessarily everything that we have created by ourselves. Zaruri nahi hai ki sirf apne products bechenge. We have to now combine the forces with our suppliers, with our partners and offer a very wide bouquet of products. We've already started on that journey, but we have to further expand. We cannot say, okay, I'm a supplier, I will not do applications. I cannot say, I will supply, but I will not give you warranty. I cannot say, okay, I will supply you X, but I will not supply you Y. Today, the game is changing altogether. And maybe I have not read the market as well as some of the other experts have, but I feel that the market is 
not going to stay like this. Like we have innovated, like we're going to the 15 lakh car owners through the Maruti network, we have to constantly be innovating. So as the world changes, it's not necessary that we will change, so we should better change. A lot of people believe in the India story. India is growing, demographics are favorable, spending power is increasing. But what is to say that the money spent by the consumer will land up in your pocket? It will only land up in our pocket if we tirelessly innovate and renovate ourselves, which is your conference theme as well. So if we, tire, if we constantly, without a break, keep on innovating, only then we can succeed. We should never be afraid of failing. We should never be afraid of experimenting. I have had, you know, I gave you three, four examples of where we have succeeded. I can give you 40 examples of where we have failed. It's true. So never be afraid of experimenting. That's my message to all of you. Tirelessly innovate and renovate ourselves is the key. As Travis Kalanick, the famous ex-CEO of Uber, who's just been ousted from Uber, says, you can't aspire to win 51 to 49. You have to win 98 to 2. It's time for all of us in this room, like I am dreaming of world domination, what is stopping you? We can all aim for world domination. Thank you very much. I think my message is, let's be innovative. Let's keep on aspiring to change the world. Let's not hesitate, let's not fear. And all of us can succeed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I request Mr. Rohan Basin to kindly join us on stage and present a memento to Mr. Sharad. Thanks a lot, sir. It was a delight to hear you. Uh, I'm a bit petrified, you know, with the cars being dry washed. I hope people don't have to be dry washed in the future with the water scarcity coming up. And I, I did a very, very wise thing of keeping you after Mr. Shiv Kera because it was a fantastic session and you had everybody all ears and engrossed. That goes kudos to your effort and your oratory skills. A large round of applause to him, please.